In this video, let's go ahead and take a look at a quadratics application problem, specifically looking at a model rocket launch path. All right, so we can see below that we have a diagram and it's gonna be showing the path of a model rocket and this is going to be launched from the ground. Now we do know that this rocket is gonna reach a maximum altitude or height of 384 feet. And this maximum height of 384 is going to happen 16 feet away from the initial launch site. Because we have this parabolic path of this rocket where it is moving up and then moving down, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and write a quadratic function that's going to represent the path of this rocket. To write a function for this, let's go ahead and first identify a few key points here. First, the coordinates of the launch location is gonna be zero comma zero. Then we have the location where the model rocket hits the ground at 32 comma zero. Then we have this point of 16 comma 384, and this is gonna mark the vertex of this parabola or the highest point of the rocket. And while not totally important, this right over here, this dotted line, we can call this our AOS or axis of symmetry. And this is just gonna be where the graph is gonna be basically cut in half or it's symmetrical about this vertical line. And this is gonna be at X equals 16. So to help visualize this on a coordinate plane a little bit here, this is gonna be the Y axis, or we're gonna say that's F of X. That's gonna represent the height of this toy or model rocket. And this would be the X axis, which represents the distance from the launch site. Now, while there's a few different forms of quadratic functions that we could write, let's go ahead and write the vertex form for quadratics. All right, so while there is standard form and factored form for quadratics, we're gonna go ahead and use vertex form since we do have the vertex for this parabola, right? Notice how the vertex here is 16 comma 384. 16 is gonna represent what H is in this formula and K is gonna represent that 384. Let's go ahead and just start by substituting in those numbers for H and K. So now that we have H and K substituted in, I think the only thing we really need to find out is the value of A, which is gonna help us know if we have a vertical stretch or shrink, also if there's going to be a reflection. Now, since our parabola is upside down here, compared to a normal parent function of parabolas, notice how this is gonna be a negative A value since we are opening this parabola down and it has a maximum instead of a minimum. Now to figure out the value for a, we're gonna go ahead and use the information that we are given that we have this 32 comma zero. Let's go ahead and use that point. This 32 is gonna represent x, and then the zero is gonna represent f of x, right? So this 32 is gonna be our x, and the zero is gonna be our f of x, or rather f of 32. So when x is 32, f of 32, or y, is gonna be equal to zero. Let's go ahead and substitute in this 32 in for x, and then the zero in for f of x. All right, now that we substituted in x and f of x, it looks like the only variable we have left is a, so let's go ahead and solve for it. So first, let's go ahead and follow what's inside the parentheses here. Now squaring this 16, we're gonna get 256, I believe, right? So we're gonna have zero is equal to uh, A times 256. I'm just gonna turn that around and say this is 256 A. And then we're gonna go ahead and say this is gonna be plus this 384. All right, next, let's go ahead and just take away 384 from both sides. On the left side, we're gonna have negative 384. And on the right side, we're just gonna have this uh, 256 A. Then we're gonna go ahead and divide both sides by 256. If we go ahead and do that, we're gonna find out that the value for A is gonna be negative 1.5. And hopefully that makes sense that we do have a negative value here because uh, we do have a parabola that has been flipped across the X axis or flipped vertically rather. So now that we know the value for A, let's go ahead and just substitute that back in for A right over here. So plugging in that a value of negative 1.5, we're gonna get the quadratic function that models this rocket that's launched, and it's gonna be f of x, or the height of this rocket is gonna be equal to negative 1.5 multiplied by the quantity of this x minus 16 squared plus 384. Now just for a little bit of extra credit here, let's talk about some intervals. 
All right, let's start off with the domain here. If we look at the domain of this function, notice how uh, the leftmost point is gonna be zero and the rightmost point is gonna be 32. So if we're gonna go ahead and write the domain of this function, uh, let's go ahead and put a bracket on zero here because uh, x can be zero. And let's go ahead and put a bracket on 32 just because the function does keep going at 32, it includes that one. What about the range of this function? Now the range is gonna be the lowest point to the highest point. If we take a look and figure out the range of this function, that's gonna be the lowest point to the highest point. So here is the lowest point of the function that's gonna be at zero because the rocket can't go below the ground. But what's the highest point? Well, the highest point of the function is gonna be over here at 384, so that's the highest point. So if we're gonna go ahead and write our range here. Let's go ahead and say that the lowest point is going to be zero, which we can include, and the highest point is gonna be that 384, which we can also include because the rocket does reach that height. All right, what about when this function is increasing and decreasing? Well, let's take a look here. Uh, we know that this function or this rocket is gonna be increasing from here all the way to here. Once it reaches the vertex, it's no longer going to be increasing. So keep in mind that it can't be increasing at the very beginning and it can't be increasing at the very end here. It's just gonna be increasing along the way. So we can't include the beginning and the end here. The beginning, it's gonna start increasing at x equals zero, and then it's gonna stop increasing uh, when x is equal to 16 here. So let's go ahead and write when this is going to be increasing. It's going to be increasing from 0 all the way to 16. But make sure we put parentheses because at 0, it's not increasing because it's still on the ground. And at 16, it's not increasing because it is turning around and it's about to start decreasing. Now for the interval in which it starts decreasing, that's gonna happen at the vertex, and then it's gonna keep decreasing all the way until it hits the ground. Now, is it gonna include the top and the bottom? No. Well, at the top, it's again, neither increasing nor decreasing, so don't include the vertex, and don't include the ground, because once it's on the ground, it's no longer decreasing anymore. So when is this interval or this uh, rocket gonna be decreasing? It's gonna start decreasing at x equals 16, and then it's gonna stop decreasing at x equals 32. So. Let's go ahead and write those intervals or that interval notation. So starting at 16, it's gonna be decreasing but not including it. And then at 32, it's gonna stop decreasing because it hit the ground. Then there are two more basic uh, interval notations we're gonna go ahead and practice. Let's talk about when this function is positive and when it is negative. So if we go ahead and look at this parabola, when the function is positive, it's above the x-axis. So notice here how the function is always actually above this x-axis since the rocket can't be underground. So it starts being positive at x equals zero here, not including zero because at zero, it's not positive because it's on the ground and it's gonna stop being positive at x equals 32. So between x equals zero and x equals 32, this rocket is going to be positive or above this x-axis, right? So, so if we go ahead and write this interval in which this uh, parabola is positive, it's gonna be positive from zero to 32, but not including zero, not including 32, since because at those locations, it is at zero, which is not positive. Now, if the rocket is positive or zero the entire time, it's never going to be negative. So we can go ahead and just say that there's gonna be no uh, interval we're gonna go ahead and write to represent the uh, interval in which this parabola is negative since it's either zero or it's positive the entire time. All right, so I know the interval notation was just a little bit extra just to practice writing interval notations for this application problem. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing and I'll see you in the next one.